hello and, and thank you. Um, thanks for having me here. It's my first visit to Taiwan and I'm excited to be here. Um, this is Leonard, <laughs> my translator, but also um, somebody who works with me on a daily basis at Global Voices. I want to tell you a little bit about how Global Voices started, how we run a global uh, blogging news organization without any office without meeting face to face on a daily basis um, I hope you've seen as many, I, I hope some of you have looked at the website before. Have, has anybody seen Global Voices before? Can you? Okay, so some have seen it. It's, it's a website that looks like this. This is the home page of Global Voices today. And it's an ordinary blog. Um, which we have uh, modified to become a, a, a more powerful um, news, news website. Um, today's top story is about bloggers in Iran talking about a government initiative um, to give free potatoes to the people. The bloggers are saying that this is a trick by the government because the elections are in a couple of months. These are ordinary people writing, not professional journalists. Global Voices has an Iranian writer who reads all the blogs and notices when many people are talking about one thing. He translates into English and he writes it so the whole world can see what ordinary people are saying. This morning, I sent the link to this post to the New York Times, encouraging them to republish and link to this story so that people all over the world can read what Iranian bloggers are saying. 今天早上我把我也把這個文章的連結提供給了紐約時報,鼓勵他們轉載並且讓更多全球的讀者知道伊朗的民眾究竟在想什麼。That is what we do at Global Voices. Uh, but we have writers from all over the world. 這就是我們在全球之聲所提供的服務跟工作,我們有很多全球的顧客都在進行相關的工作。We also have a version of the website in Chinese. 我們也有中文版的網站。and Leonard is the editor of that website. This this website has translations from Global Voices. So these are um, copies of the articles that appear in English. But we have many, many different languages. So, uh, I want to tell you the, the reason that Global Voices started. It's a very big world. When the World Wide Web, uh, when people first started talking about the World Wide Web, there was this idea that um, it could enable people all over the world to communicate with one another very easily. Um, 
This happens many times, but most of the time, people still use the internet to um, read about their own country and their own political situation. We have many international uh, media, many newspapers. We have many bloggers. But it's hard to know what you should read in such a mass of, of communication and information. And oftentimes, even though many media are talking about international news and international politics, they don't really get into all the corners of the world. At the top, you see a world map that uh, represents the interest of the magazine The Economist. So you can see that countries that they talk about a lot in The Economist are very big. You have big in the Middle East, big in certain other parts of the world, but then very small in others. You can see that some continents are squeezed together. 在上半部的图片，我们可以看到是英国经济学人杂志他们对于世界各个地方所报道的范围跟它的比例。在我们看到，如果是报道很多的区块的这些国家，就放的很大。例如在中东地区，还有世界上特定的部分几个国家，但是
um, as more people joined the global blogosphere and more people joined the project, that there was also a very strong need for translation. Because with so many people writing about their daily lives, um, it's hard to expect them all to speak English. So, we have articles from, for instance, Iraq, where we look at what Iraqi bloggers are saying about the war and how they experience. So, and many times their perspective will be different from what you see in international media. And it's interesting to see the variety of opinions. Um, people who are uh, People who have different opinions. When many times international media um, have the habit of presenting things black and white. They'll say Iraqis think this or Iraqis think that. And really when you read what people are saying, you see that there's a lot of diversity in opinion and also people's reasons for having the opinions that they have. 我们常常看到国际媒体在报道国家的时候都用太过于黑白二元的方式来说明这个国家的舆论他们说可能伊拉克人的这个看法会那样看法但其实我们如果接触到一般的民众的话可以了解到他们有很多多元不同的看法。
他们不过是在 Facebook 或者是在无名小站等等不同的部落格里面，他们究竟怎么样回应，或者是看待，或者是怎么样去呃分析这件事情。What can we learn about politics, culture,、uh, and religion in this society? We can from these articles learn about the country's political, religious, and cultural influences. It's sometimes much more fun to read about these things in the words of the ordinary people. So, sometimes reading these ordinary people's perspectives can be more interesting and interesting. It's difficult to see on this、uh, picture, but up here we have.、Uh, Translations of this article that have appeared on different global voices language websites. 各位可能没办法看清楚，不过在这个页面，英文的网站上面，我们会列出他们已经被翻译成哪些其他的语言。This particular article has been translated to Polish,、uh, Swahili, and Chinese. 在这篇文章当中，它已经被翻译成波兰文，还有斯华西里文以及中文。We have.、Um, I'll be telling you more about the languages that we have because we have several languages which I'm sure that you haven't heard of. 我们将会跟各位介绍全球之声还有哪些语言版本，因为我相信有些语言版本可能大家听都没听过。So these are some of the people who work on global voices. They come from all different walks of life, all different time zones and continents. They live in all different parts of the world, in different regions, in different countries. They have different backgrounds. As I said, it started as a small project with a small group of people. Because of the small project, it became a big project. As I said, it started as a small project with a small group of people. But now we are almost 300 volunteers who work together to create this website. 我们从很小的一个部落开始，现在已经有超过三百位的职工一起参与这个全球性的计划。Each person does a little bit of the work, and together we make it happen. 每一个人都贡献一点点的工作，就可以成就很大的一个网站。This is again a little bit difficult to see because of the image, but these are some of the many people who contribute to the website. They are almost all of them bloggers themselves. 这些也是我们。其他的作者的一个群像，不过呢，这他这些部落，这些的我们的作者基本上都几乎全部都是部落。Sometimes we've invited them to become a part of the project because we like their blog. 有时候我们邀请他们成为我们的作者或者我们的贡献者，只是因为我们喜欢的部落。Other times somebody will write to us and say, "I noticed you don't have any articles from my country. I want to write them." 有时候也会有人自愿的写信给我们说，我看到你们的全球之声网站上面并没有我的国家的报道，所以我希望能够把我的报道写出来。This is a list of all the countries that we have written about. 这是我们所有报道的国家列表。And you can see them very easily on the website, and you can click on them and visit different countries you might be interested in. 在网站上面，大家可以看浏览这个列表之后，点选任何一个国家，去看看关于这些国家有什么样的消息。You can also navigate the the content according to topics、um, like uh, politics or、um, arts and culture, language, technology. We also have different topics. There are many different topics that can be selected, such as politics, culture, language, and different concepts. Each country has their own unique concept. 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 如果各位不了解或不熟悉网际网络的话，可能很很难了解我们这个组织究竟如何运作。We have many many email groups. 我们有很多很多不同的邮件群组。Where we organize、um, our work. So each region of Global Voices,、uh, Southeast Asia, South Asia, Africa, each group will have its own email group. 我们把全球全世界分成了很多很多不同的区域，每一个区域里面的作者，他们有各自不同的呃邮件群组。The Indian elections are coming up now, and the authors from South Asia in their email group discuss how they want to cover the Indian elections. 现在印度正在举行国会大选，所以在南亚的地区的布洛克还有作者，他们在讨论要如何报道这场大选。They exchange links and ideas from different countries. 他们交换不同国家的联结，还有不同国家的想法
And this kind of communication happens in many different groups, many different mailing lists. We also have one mailing list for everybody who's involved at Global Voices. Nearly 300 people are emailing each other every single day. Everything we publish on Global Voices is published under what we call a Creative Commons license. Um, it's, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but um, traditional copyright um, tells people, don't, don't copy, don't republish what I've done. Uh, we do the opposite. We tell all media and all blogs, if you like something you read on Global Voices, you can copy it and republish. 我们在所有全球之间的网站都是依据所谓创用CC这样的一个授权观念来发布和公布。我不知道各位清清楚所谓创用CC是什么。在传统的著作权观念里面呢,他们是要求你们不可以随便转载,不可以随便复制,不可以
我们所提供连接的部落格也好，都是一种互惠的行为。This is why we use a Creative Commons license. 所以因此我们在使用创用 CC 的分享概念。Uh, again, another example. This is、uh, Yahoo News. They have divided all their news into different language,、uh, sorry, into different country sections, and the, for, on the China page and several other country pages,、um, we have global license feeds as well. 就是就是呃，英国的雅虎新闻，他们所提供的页面，他们把新闻依照不同的国家分类，在不同的国家里面都会看到全球之声关于那个国家的报道。So you can see that a person writing a personal blog. In any country in the world, all of a sudden can gain an international audience. 因此，每一个任何一个人在任何一个部落格写评论或者是撰写关于任何国家的事情，都有可能忽然之间成为国际关注焦点。Not everyone, and not all the time, but there are certain moments where it makes sense. 这种情况并不是时时在发生，不过在某些时刻、某些人事、时地物或者正确的时空当中的时候，它就会发生这样的情况。Once the information is on the internet, it stays there, and it makes it available for people to find and search for ever. Maybe. 现在只要资讯公开在网上之后，它就会留存在那边，不论多久之后，人们都可以继续继续在查找、翻阅以前的资讯。Some of our funding,、uh, we need funding.、Uh, some people work as volunteers on the project. We have about、uh, a little over twenty editors.、Uh, Who each have responsibility for a region, who get paid a little bit to do the work. 全球之声除了所有呃三百近将近三百位的职工之外，我们也有大概二十人的编辑。他们这些编辑会领取少额的薪水，然后进行编辑还有相关的管理工作。因此，全球之之声也需要经费来源。And we're about five people who work full time on the project, almost full time. 在三百个人当中，有大概五个人是做几几乎是接近全职的工作，在回应这个全球之声的网站。For the first three years, we were funded, co-funded by the news organization Reuters. 在、啊、我们前成立的前三年呢，我们是由路透社赞助支持。Now we rely mostly on philanthropic、uh, foundations、uh, in different parts of the world. 我们现在主要是靠慈善基金会在全球世界各地提供赞助。It's a non-profit project.、Uh, we don't make any money from what we do.、Um, 这是一个非营利组织，我们并不为这样其中内容而获得任何利益。But someday we hope to find a way to become、uh, have more independent revenue sources. Currently, we ask for donations from readers,、um, but it's not a significant source of income. 目前我们当然是。也欢迎呃独立的啊，或者个人的呃的捐款。不过在目前为止，我们目前还是以基金会为主要的经费来源。Right now we get about ten thousand visitors every day to the blog. 现在每天全球之声大概有上万人会来浏览。Maybe one day when we have millions of readers, we'll make millions of dollars on advertising. 也许在未来哪一天，我们如果每天会有上上百万人流次的话的流量的话，也许会我们会赚到上百万元。But we're some far away from that. 不过目前还有点距离。One of the problems、uh, we encounter working with people all over the world is that、uh, there are many limits on freedom of expression in most parts of the world. 目前在全球的网络上面，很多国家仍然面临言论自由受到前置和压迫的问题。So if you're trying to work with bloggers in the Middle East, or bloggers in China, or bloggers many places,、um, You need to help them find ways to get around censorship sometimes. 因此，我们如果要跟中东地区、中国地区，还有很多不同地区的部落客合作的话，我们要帮助他们能够啊避开，或者是能够跳过这些言论审查。We created this project called Global Voices Advocacy to try and support、um, online freedom of expression efforts around the world. 所以我们成立了全球之声倡议计划，希望能够帮助全球地、全球各地的人能够。It's also a blog that's connected to the main、uh, newsroom. 创意计划的网站也同样来自于部落格。And here we keep track of、uh, bloggers who have been arrested,、um, people who have campaigns online、uh, to support freedom of expression in, in their countries. 在这个网站上面，我们追踪全世界有哪些部落格遭到遭到逮捕、遭到囚禁、遭到审判。We've made a, a map 
that shows different instances of Web 2.0 censorship. So when blogs, uh, I'm sorry, when Facebook, for instance, or YouTube has been filtered or blocked in a, a country, we add it to this map. 我们可以利用全球地图这样的概念来帮助各位了解哪个地方对于哪一个Web2.0的工具它有审查还有封锁的情况 we try and connect activists with one another across borders so that activists in Turkey could learn from activists in Pakistan 我们希望串联全球各地的网络运动人士 所以例如说在土耳其的人 人民就能够或土耳其的网络运动支持者，他们真的了解在巴基斯坦发生什么事情。We've also produced uh, guides that help people blog anonymously using different software tools. 我们也有一提供一份指南，包括那告诉告诉全球世界的人呢，他能能够如何透过匿名的方式写部落格。And we've created a community of people who are working together uh, to try and find different ways to help uh, ordinary citizens. Communicate in places where there is very little freedom of We also realize in trying to cover the entire world that there is, uh, you must have heard, the digital divide. 我相信在全世界发展部落的时候, in poor countries, many of the people who start blogging first are uh, the more advantaged, uh, more advantaged groups in society. In so if you're going to get real diversity of opinion from some places, you need to figure out what people are saying outside the cities. Maybe in population groups that are marginalized, that you don't hear from very often. So if we really want to understand the world's diversity, we need to bring the tools of the internet or the online tools to more people's hands, especially those who are living in the poorest social groups. So we created another project. So we also created another project. This one is called Rising Voices, and we got a grant um, from a U.S. Um, foundation to give micro grants to new blogging projects in uh, marginalized communities in different parts of the world. This website is called Rising.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.com.
decided to start translating Global Voices posts into Chinese on his own. 我后来有一个人，是台湾的一个部落客叫郑国威，他就开始一个人开始翻译，把这些全球趋势的英文讯息翻译成中文。So we emailed him. 所以我们后来跟他联络。And he was invited to come join the community, and a conversation started with many other members, editors, and authors about how we could take this idea and multiply it into other languages. 他加入全球之声之后，很多的部落客在讨论我们要如何。we created this project called Lingua. So we created Lingua, a world-renowned language translation project. And you can see some of the many languages that we work in now. Leonard is actually a co-director of Lingua and helps manage many of the different translation communities on a day-to-day basis. We're almost finished. We're almost finished. You can start thinking about your questions now. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Chinese. It's this one. Italian. Global Voices in Italian. Global Voices in Bangla. From Bangladesh. Um, this one is hard to see. Um, here's, here's a list of some of the different languages that we have translated Global Voices in. 所以这些就是全球之声现在有各种不同语言版本的列表，我们刚才听看到了中文、意大利文，还有孟加拉文等等。We have global voices in many of the Latin languages: Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese. But we also have languages from countries far away, like Madagascar, where they speak Malagasy. 我们有一些西欧语系的语言，比如说英文、西班牙文、法文、葡萄牙文等等。但是我们有一些来自于各个不同地区的语言，例如说像马达加斯加人他们所呃所说的马达马拉马拉加西语。Or Swahili, which is spoken in Tanzania and many other African countries. 或者是斯瓦西西里语，它是在呃坦桑尼亚还有非洲很多国家所说的语言。And new languages get added daily. Um, or daily, monthly. Um, somebody will see that we're missing a language and will volunteer to start a website, and we welcome them into the group. So we have new languages added daily. 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 Become hubs where volunteers can join and start translating themselves. And this became a point to help other people who are interested in joining the group and join the group. And many of these websites become quite successful on their own. Many of these translation websites have actually become quite successful. This is an example of um, uh, where a, the Global Voices in Chinese appears on China Times. This is the home page, and all the way at the bottom, on the right corner, there is a Global Voices feed. So in the Global Voices feed, you can see the link to the Global Voices feed. Just like we have on Reuters and in other news organizations. In English. Ah, this one is the Global Voices feed. We also have a good friendship with Pepo here in Global Voices in Chinese. And that's it. Maybe we have a seat. We'll take a seat, then uh, people can ask questions. Should we turn turn the light on, or should we keep it dark? Light. Light. Oh. Uh, and my email address is there. If anybody ever needs to. That's my email. Wang, if you have any interest in meeting with Lana, you know the number. Can I give you? Oh, okay. So, uh, questions. Anyone? 中文就你可以帮忙翻译，还是你要说英文？OK，Say your name first then。Okay, thank you, Miss Larson, and this is Clytus. 
And um, uh, I am very interested in this web website. Also, I visit it quite often, and I like it. And uh, I have several questions. And uh, should I ask like all of them, or like the second one? Second one is that I'm guess that uh, perhaps there will be some political forces into the global voices. Maybe before you add, maybe before you answer, I would like to add to uh, uh, just a bit more on that second question. I'd like to be more specific on, for example, when, you, when your writers, your editors talking about, for example, you know themselves, Korea, China, Taiwan, Palestinian, and Israel, how do you deal with the new, new neutrality of your news angle? Yeah, um, thank you. Uh, those are great questions. The, the way our newsroom works is a little bit different from a traditional media uh, newsroom. Traditionally, an editor will tell a journalist, go write this story. This is what is the news. In our newsroom, it works the other way around. Uh, it's the bloggers who tell us what is the news. Um, I can't read Chinese. Um, I can't read Swahili. Um, I can read a lot of other languages. But um, I need bloggers on the ground to tell me what people are talking about. And that is how we decide what our news is. Um, each uh, blogger in an individual country works with an editor. Um, and that editor will help them decide on the angle for the story, um, perfecting it, um, making sure that the language is okay before things get published. As managing editor, I see the article after it's been published. Um, if there's a story that I feel we're missing out on, like um, maybe there's a, a war or some protests, then I will email the editor and tell them, we need something on this. Can you figure out if bloggers are saying anything? Is anything going on? Um, so it's, it's a combination. But um, that is, that is how, how the story has come up on the site. And there is so much news happening all over the world um, that Sometimes, because our writers are volunteers, we'll have many posts from one part of the world and not so many from another, and sometimes it'll change because volunteers will come and go. Um, Tashin 斯瓦迪里这样的语言所以因此他的编辑和作者之间的关系是这样来形成的的一个模式I'd say one of the most difficult political forces to deal with is, is censorship, where um, we've had contributors uh, who were threatened uh, by police, um, 
even some who, who were jailed. Um, we have in some countries where governments uh, filter or block our website um, or different language versions of our, our website. Um, that is that is difficult. Um, and we also have many writers who are forced to write anon anonymously um, for their safety. And that is difficult because we don't want to encourage people to take risks um, unless they, they feel they have to or they want to. Um,当然政治历史的确存在于网络上面um, in terms of what, what you were mentioning with um, uh, politics, politics in this sense, uh, where you can have uh, countries like Israel or Palestine, or maybe even um, Taiwan and China, or um, many, many different conflicts uh, or political discussions around the world where people have very different experiences of what is happening and many different interpretations of what has happened, what should happen, um, and this is this is hard. Um, what we try and do is present as many different opinions as possible. So when we have a uh, 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 new war between Israel and Palestine, we try and listen to what Palestinian bloggers are saying, present it, have a context for it, and at the same time also listen to what Israeli bloggers are saying, Lebanese bloggers are saying, and other countries in the region. Um, sometimes when you read these things, you realize that uh, it's almost as though people are living in parallel realities. Um, but the diversity is interesting, um, and reading people's understandings of the situation definitely help a global audience understand how complex some of these issues are. Um, I think the, the way that uh, we deal with these things internally is to try and keep communication open between people, um, try and create friendships, and encourage um, our contributors to stay, take a step back and simply report on what people are saying. Um, that is the closest we get to objectivity, I think. Um, we ask our writers not to uh, write about their own opinions, but to quote from bloggers that have different opinions. Um, so their job is to report on what other people are saying. I think we get around many conflicts in this way um, because uh, we're not having a constant political discussion. We're having a discussion about other people having a discussion. And having it removed a little bit um, makes it easier to deal with some of these questions uh, calmly. 当然在纯粹的政治上而言政治上的冲突国际之间不同的冲突台海以巴南北韩等等都很多的冲突正在发生当中相对性的隐形词它并不是一个绝对性说多怎么样的多元或者不同但是我们希望能够尽可能呈现越来越多不同的声音让大家在看到这样不同的各种不同的意见的时候能够理解到其实在这个事件里面有很多很多的复杂性
，我们并我们并不要，我我们不建议我们的作者在他们的报道当中表达出他们的看法，而是我们的，因为我们在全球之声的布洛克的工作室，我们要报道其他布洛克对于这件事情的看法，而不是他们自己身为布洛克对于这件事情的看法。因此，我们希望能够这个借这个方式呢，让他们能够退后一步想，以退后一步的方式来观看这个这样的选举，这是我们可能尽可能维持到客观的一个原则。More questions? Hey, um, thanks, Miss Larson, for your explicit speech. My name is Daniel. Um, I'm very curious about the development of civic journalism in the future. So here, I would like to ask you a question, a big question, that, um, in your opinion. In the coming years, as the internet and um, the technology uh, continue to grow, how will civic journalism and the traditional mainstream media interact um, in the future? Or even do you think that civic journalism is going to one day replace the traditional mainstream media? How about your opinions about this topic? Thank you. 他对他的问题关于在网络跟科技不断发展情况之下，传统媒体跟公公民媒体之间究竟要如何互动，而是不是有可能在有未来的某一天，公民媒体甚至取代了传统媒体 ？I think um many different things will happen at once. Um, it it won't be just one thing or the other, but as we can see already, um. Things are happening on several different levels at the same time. So, more and more people are uh, uploading photos, uploading videos, writing blogs about things that happen in their societies, whether it's protests or politics or injustice um, or just everyday life. It's become such a common thing. And I think more and more people are seeing how these. Um, these pieces of citizen media are becoming influential and are acquiring some form of uh, feeling that they have a responsibility to do it. That, they, that people have a responsibility to upload an injustice if they witness it. Um, and I think that might be a new thing in many places, that, that people feel compelled to do that. I always ask people, what, what made you record that thing you saw? What made you take a picture of it? And, and uh, it, it's hard to explain where that comes from, um, but definitely we're seeing more and more people feeling that they have um, a responsibility to participate in this form of citizen media. They might not really even think about it so much, they just do it, put it on YouTube. Um, so that is going to happen more and more. Um, professional news media is using this content as a raw material for their reporting. Um, they find more and more content that they can use, which makes their life easier. Um, so they will continue to use it more and more, I think, especially as people start getting better and better at producing it. In the case of foreign news, um, we see many international media can no longer afford foreign correspondents. Um, they have to cut back on foreign news media. And for Global Voices, at least, we've discovered but we've experienced that um, there's been a growth of interest in what we're doing from um, media organizations like CNN, the BBC, or even New York Times, who call us and say, um, do you know somebody we can talk to about the political situation in Madagascar? Because we don't know anybody. Or um, could you identify a Russian blogger to talk to us about the crisis between Georgia and Russia? So this is happening more and more, um, where we are trying to help media um, understand how they can fill the gaps in some of their reporting with citizen media content. Um, I think there will always be a place for professional journalists. Um, I think that when professional journalism is done really well, it's, it's something um, uh, special and very useful and, and something we can uh, benefit from. Uh, however, uh, there are many different media situations all over the world. 
Um, in some countries, you have a lot of media, but not such good quality. Um, in other countries, you have very little media. Um, in some countries, you have lots of media, but it's all government media. Um, so sometimes you need citizens as a counterpoint to the professional media. Um, it's many different situations, um, but it's definitely changing. And one thing is certain is that more and more people are creating their own media. And journalists have to um, follow it. I think journalists have a responsibility to follow it and, and use it creatively because it's there. 其实我们觉得现在的情况是很多不同的现象公民媒体的影响力越来越高类似一种责任感其实是一件非常好的事情而相较于这样的我们现在看到全球之声的情况是俄罗斯发生冲突的时候